Hello everybody, welcome to the stream today. Again, we have no sneaky zoo, so I'm I'm running double duty, triple duty, you know, it's uh you know, it's all kind it's all kinds of stuff in here today, but we are doing good. So today we are gonna talk some fun stuff today. I hope you guys are ready. It's a beautiful day here. It's like it's spring, maybe it's summer. I don't know. I was wearing shorts and a t-shirt out today. It was ill-advised, but I still did it and I feel good about it, you know? It's just as soon as it's above 12 degrees or something like that if you're in Canada it is shorts weather you know might even be sandals weather depending which part of the country you live in but um here we go you thought it was a WF Raw's war intro now that would be kind of cool I, I, I would I would I'm a big WWE fan so I mean I would be into that um now before we get started on anything I want you guys to check out my sweet coffee cup I got this in Tutlingen Germany when we were at the Stores and Bickle factory tour I just thought it was really, you know, isn't that just kind of different? Kind of fun, you know? I think it's uh, I think it's pretty pretty cool. I got no Yeti today, though. All my Yetis. I told you Sneaky Zoo's not here, so all the Yetis, everything's dirty. It's just, you know, it's a whole it's a whole thing around here. Now, I saw somebody asking earlier, I don't understand about the Dynav app because you have to carry a torch. There's a whole, whole range of vaporizers that are heated with a butane torch. Uh, it's still 100% a vaporizer, just like a Mighty, just like a Volcano. I mean, there's only stores and Bickle products, but like a Solo 2 or something like that. Totally the same thing. It's just its heat source is a butane torch rather than it being a battery, right? So it's just a different heat source. And if you really don't like using a torch, you can absolutely use uh, an induction heater with a Dynavap to just completely get rid of the torch out of the system, if that's not your thing. So you're not obligated to use a torch, but... To, you know, to think you don't want to use one just because it has a torch, you know, maybe open your mind up a little bit because there's a bunch of amazing ones that have it. Hey, I saw Mike Hunt in here. Good to see you, man. Good to see everyone. Patricia's in here. Jim, Odin Arcade, Nick, Ben, where's everyone chatting in from today? Let's do, let's do a quick shout out and then we're going to get into this. We're going to get into it, but I want to see where the web of our session is expanding to. We are, of course, in beautiful, sunny Surrey, B.C., Let's just call it Vancouver, okay? Let's call it Vancouver. I don't think I need to get so pedantic. It's basically Vancouver. Arizona, Angel Beach, Florida. Nice. Yeah, Mike, Mike Hunt has one of the best usernames. I, I, we got to give it up for Mike. Let's give it up for Mike in the chat. Mississippi, M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. Grand Rapids, Michigan, Switzerland. There we go. Oklahoma, Virginia, Lake Champlain, Lake Champlain, nice. Dallas, Texas, Missouri, Michigan, wow. San Diego, White Rock, we, we're all over the place here. Los Angeles, wow, very, very cool. Very, you know, no one wants to come to Surrey. Come on, man, it's it's cool up here, you know. Colorado, Germany, Los Angeles, Dawson Creek, hey, Dawson Creek, woo! I've been to Dawson Creek. Dawson Creek is awesome, right? Um, just kidding. Nothing against Dawson Creek. Dawson Creek is cool. I used to know the, uh, the mayor. I used to know the mayor of Dawson Creek. I knew him, uh, reason, reasonably well. Sweden. Oh, nice. There we go. Amsterdam. Whoo. Wow. Okay. Very cool. So I want to start with a little, uh, trip down memory lane. I was just, I, I go through my old vape shelf and this is, this is what I wanted to pull out today. This one here, the cloudiest nine who had one of these, this thing was, I don't even know if I want to say it was ahead of its time. 
you know, when it, I don't know if the world was I, was ready for this idea when it came out, but essentially the idea behind the Cloudius 9 is it's a vape and it's a water piece all in one. That's That was the idea behind it. And, you know, it worked to a decent point. Like it's just a, de you know, little straightforward convection or conduction vape. But the water inside, I think, was the, you know, that was supposed to be its claim to fame but the water was it looks like a pepper grinder it does look like it and it's got this thing on the bottom too so that's kind of like a pepper grinder sort of action um but it was just the the real difficult thing was first of all so hard to like have something with electronics and it keeps water inside you know what i mean like that's just a little bit sketch to begin with but the other thing i found was just the cleaning it and the changing the water was just not good like because there's not that much water in here so you have to change it out reasonably often or if it just starts to taste crappy pretty fast and so it was just messy and you know hard to clean and there's gaskets and there's all that kind of stuff so it just never never really worked out oh i just turned it on i did just charge it up a little bit or at least i press some buttons oh Oh, I think it's even, I think it's heating up here. It's doing something. You see that? See the lights kind of going? It's doing something. I, I, I don't even remember. So many of these vapes, though, it's just like you don't use them for so long. And I'm just like, I, I don't remember where this stuff goes. Um, I don't even know where you load this thing up, honestly. It's been like a long time and I wasn't a huge fan of it when I used it. But um, it, yeah, it, it did look like a huge, a pure gimmick um, stuntman mark. I think that was pretty accurate. Kind of, a, I don't know if they just, I don't know, I don't know, gimmick is, gimm gimmicks may be a little, a little mean, just because it was innovative in certain ways, you know what I mean? So, I would just say an idea that probably didn't need to happen, you know what I mean? They're kind of trying to solve a problem that, that isn't going to be solved like this, you know, but interesting form factor, yeah, pepper mill, I think is probably the best, the best what we have. Uh, I've got a question from Craig Mitchell, yeah, and if you guys have questions, please ask away in the chat. The idea behind these sessions are I show you guys what I'm using. We go back and forth. I always do a massive amount of hits at the end compared to what I normally do in a day-to-day -day life. Um, but if you have questions, please ask away. And before we get into the M7 and M7XL, go ahead and throw the video a like. And if you're looking for any of the stuff that you find me go over in my videos, we have a website in Canada and the United States where we sell all the stuff you see me go over. And right now, I don't know if you guys got our mailer today. Hopefully, you're subscribed to our mailing list. We send out, I, I will, I'm making the claim right here. I'm making the bold claim. We have the best mailers out of anybody. I'm sorry. We do. Like, we, we really do. Our graphic designer is just, she is incredibly talented. And I can just send her these, you know, harebrained idea and she just gets it. And like, our, our mailers are honestly, like, really good. I'm not kidding you. Um, and they got lots of content and stuff like that. So right now, if you buy an M7 or an M7 Plus, if you like what you see, or an M7 Plus, M7 XL, um, if you buy one by March 28th, you get a free M Plus with it. So you're getting the new M7 as well as the M Plus, like the previous current kind of version, free alongside with it if you buy it by March 28th. So pretty good deal if you are interested in one of these i would definitely take advantage of that because who doesn't want a free vape right i think that's pretty good um let's see i i don't know what i'm doing 86 how dry is your bud before vaping i let it dry up 24 hours mm, i don't do that myself i don't do that myself i i just it's right out of the container into the grinder for me but i've got boveda packs in there to keep it at a proper moisture level um, you know, I, I find as long as it's at a reasonable moisture level, you can just vape it. Yeah, like I sometimes, sometimes I grind it, leave my grinder open for a little bit. That works too. To, but you definitely, I, I would not, I would not recommend leaving it for 24 hours. Just you don't need to, right? Um, Mike Hunt. No, I did, I did not. Um, yeah, they're, they're wanting, they're wanting soon though. I know they're, they're in the like final phases of getting it ready kind of thing. Like he was saying that they're making the new molds with their metal injection rather than the plastic ones. So it's going to look and function better than the current one sort of thing. So should be coming soon, hopefully. Um, and hopefully they'll have price info too, but I don't want to, I don't want to tell you info that I, I really don't know. So let's go ahead and talk about these fun things here. And this is the new Dynavap M7 and Dynavap M7 XL. Now you can probably guess which one is which. 
This is the M7, right? The one that is not XL length. And then this is the M7 XL, the one that is XL length. We have a video coming out tomorrow on our YouTube channel. It comes out tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific time. And it's a 58 minute interview I did with George when we were down in Champs. So I've had this in my hot little hand, you know, since like late February kind of thing. So that video is coming out tomorrow at 10 a.m. But we're also, if you want to watch it today, you can watch it on our website. It's currently up on our website. So you can watch it right now if you want. So I want to show you guys a couple a couple uh, info sheets about the M7. So this is this is Dynavap's quick and dirty features about the M7. Bigger rips. The M7 tip chamber has more mass for heat retention and allows users greater control over one hit extractions. Everybody likes that. Dynavap tips are just getting better and better and better. Um, especially, I'm going to show you an old Dynavap. You're really going to see what I mean finless tip design so they're not doing the five fins seven fins they're going for finless tip designs now they've really changed that design language the finless tip designs keeps your fingers cool with up to 20 percent reduction in heat transfer from tip to stem and it's important to remember as well when you have less heat that's transferring from your tip to the stem not only is that better because it's not getting your stem warm but it also means that that heat is going to stay in the oven where you actually want George uh, refers to it in the interview as the heat going down the drain when it's going down the stem because that's just doing something we don't want. We're wasting that heat. So the M7 tip is designed to do a better job at retaining that heat. Even extraction. The refined distribution of mass in the tip and chamber walls help prevent scorching and hot spots in your material. It's about, about normal. More airflow due to redesigned captive cap fitment and increased convection heating versus previous models. So you definitely get some more convection heating um, than some of the older Dynavaps especially. Then we have the XL version available with the MXL condenser assembly and mouthpiece, which we'll go over. Airflow controls are very cool how they do it on the M7XL with the condenser. It's just a way better system. Airflow control made simple using new airport. Oh, that's not what they're talking about there, um, but we'll go over that. Air, airflow control made simple using the new airport designed and pivot style rocker. We got, I got some nice pictures of that there, but I just want to show you a little quick and dirty. That's the airport and that's the new pivot style rocker. So different look than the M plus. That's for darn sure. Um, with this one and it's a really ins you'll, you'll want to watch that interview with George uh, it just has so much insight so much information as to why they made the decisions they did the goal behind making this one the things they were really trying to do different I, I think you guys are really going to like that one so microdose ready with our adjust a bowl that reduces chamber bowl size by half and actually works right they should add that on there and actually works if you've struggled with the half bowl position in the past you know, as someone who sells a half bowl converter, I don't want them to keep getting this good, but they are getting better for sure. And if you have a brand new CCD and if you're moving it up from the bottom, that thing locks and prays pretty good. I, I, I can't say it doesn't. Uh, streamlined design with a textured pattern throughout the stem for a pleasant new look and feel. Then the captive cap is engineered to click when heated. Well, that's that's the same sort of thing. The captive clack, the captive clack, captive clack, blah, blah, blah. there's no L's in there. The captive cap clicks there's the l the captive cap clicks when it's at temperature that's your temperature indicator that's how you control this one that's your battery if you will right so i want to show you guys first things first i'm gonna to have to find this photo i want to show you this close-up of the texture because i think this is very cool so let me find this one We've got quite a few to go so there you go that is a, a super macro shot of the texture on the m7 and the m7 xl same body on the m7 and m7 xl same tip different condenser so if you look at that it's this like it, it almost looks like it's interwoven metal um, and when you get it in your hands unless you have crazy you know spider vision or something like that magnifying vision you can't see those patterns like it's just it's so intricate so when you look back at it here and you see the actual expanded then let's just go and take a look at like a close-up photo or something like that. So like that's a pretty close-up photo and you can kind of sort of see that texturing a little bit, but not even close, right? Not even close to how it actually looks under a macro lens. So I think that was a pretty cool thing they did, um, they did with that one. George said a big part of the um, idea behind the M7 and the M7 XL was to give everybody that enhanced device so it's not looking like a tube of metal but to make it a little 
more understated. I think they felt like they went a little far with the M+. Definitely some people think that. Like, people certainly think that the M+. Some, some people, some, some people it's their favorite body. Some people they say the M+, it's not for me because I don't like the texture on it. Um, me personally, I like the texture on it. I think the texture looks super cool. I appreciate the grippiness, but they wanted to go back to kind of basics for this one with the M7. So to give it a more understated kind of a vibe, but still got some designy stuff going on. So it's not just like a simple tube or something like that. You want to talk about a simple tube. Check this out here. This is unfortunately, this is the only original Dynavap M I have left. Um, and this is a Dynavap M, the sandblasted edition. So this is the only M I have left. And just look at where it's come from. And con consider this is the sandblasted one. So this is like the nicer version of that, right? It's having a really hard time focusing on me. It just wants to focus on my pretty face. Come on, camera. Like there's more to me than this pretty face. Um, but, you know, when people say, talk about Dynavaps now, and, oh, it's just a tube of metal. It's like, no, no, this was a tube of metal. Like, th this was a tube of metal. This is not just a tube, you know. Take a look between these two here, right? Like, look at the tips. You know, like, they, they've done some engineering. They've done some work to get from this point to this point here. The airflow in this, like, let me just, let me try this again here. This is, like, it... It's not, no, it's not clogged. So this is, this is not covering the airport on this at all. Like you got to go pretty hard. Now let's see this one here, not covering the airport. Way more comfortable. If you cover the airport on this, you know, I'd say it's probably half the airflow kind of thing. Um, you definitely want to, you want to use the, the Dynavaps. We're going to go over this, but you want to try them with the airport uncovered. Like George goes over that extensively in the interview, talks about the whys and how, how they're designed and all that kind of stuff. They're really not designed to use your airport like a carb, right? Like that's what most people do because it, it comes natural, right? And you kind of, you know, back and forth, but you just, you have to try it. Try hitting your M just hands free don't cover the airport whatsoever because they're designed to work like that. They're designed to have the proper airflow, proper function <clears throat> without covering the airport. So you absolutely can cover the airport, but you don't need to. So a worthwhile thing to try if you have not experimented with that. Um, I saw a question there. Somebody was asking about the... Um, oh, go ahead and vote in this poll. If you guys haven't voted in this poll, please do go ahead and vote. 65 votes. I want to end the poll soon. Um, so go ahead and vote in that if you haven't. Seems like the M7 XL is is by far the winner, um, which isn't that surprising, I guess, just because it, it is different, right? So i don't know what i'm doing you got a peak pro nice good choice man you got it from our site Ugh, even better great great choice then um despract what am i using to dab concentrate always a few different things obviously you know i'm not a one one vape man um but i would say what i go to a lot the proxy the proxy is probably what i use more than anything just because i use concentrate more on the go than at home i use more flour at home and concentrate on the go so the proxy is just kind of the absolute perfect on the go concentrate thing um we did actually just get some vape pens in just like you know old-fashioned vape pens kind of thing just because those are such a good portable tool to have in your arsenal right i love to have a good vape pen um, it, it, it would never be like my choice at home or something like that, but you need things that you're not just using at home, right? At least, at least I do. So, uh, let's go ahead and look at some close-ups of this beauty here. I want to show you guys the M7 and the M7 XL and all of their glory. So let's go back to our, let's go back to our first photo. This doesn't have a good, uh, fast way to go through all these photos here because now I'm having to like showing you all my best photos in this terrible, terrible view. There we go. Okay, so we're back here. So there you go. So that's the two side by side. So as you see, we have the M7 and then the M7 XL. When you look at the body of these two, what you're going to notice is that it's inverted, right? So I want to show you what I mean here. So take a look at the M7 and then take a look at the M7 XL. You'll notice that this top part is different on both of them. 
And if we just flip it around, now the top part is the same on either of them. So you can use the body either way. If you prefer the look, you can put the condenser in this side, put the tip on this side, but it's just, it's designed so this one looks better when you have the XL mouthpiece, when you use it in this orientation. And then when you don't have the XL mouthpiece, you have the other orientation and it's just better lip feel, better to use all that kind of stuff. So kind of some cool interchangeability in there. Um, but yeah, the M7. So we're going to, we're going to end this poll now. So we got 75, 25, pretty resounding results. I would say for that one, people are liking the M7 XL. Uh, how does the weight of the XL feel? Oh, it's, it's light. I mean, when you have them both in your hands, I mean, I can certainly tell the XL weighs more, but you know, it's still super light. We can weigh them. I mean, I got a scale right here and I like to pull this scale out for this specific kind of reason here. Let's see what they actually weigh. That's provided they're under 50 grams. The scale only goes up to 50 grams. So let's see. So the M7. So the M7 is 21.19 for the M7. The M7 XL. Oh, M7 XL is over 50, I guess. So let's weigh this in two parts. So 6.8. Maybe this doesn't go up to 50. 6.8. Oh, I don't, I don't think it's like 25. So 6.8 and 19.19. So about 20, 25 or something like that. I guess this only goes to 25 grams. Yeah, versus like 21. So we're talking a few grams more for the XL version. Not, not too much difference at all. Some people really prefer the, some people prefer the XL version for the, they find it a lot easier to handle. Um, the thing that I found just absolutely incredible about these is just how good they have their tolerances down now. Like if anybody's a, a Dynavap user from back in the day, especially if you, you were using third party stems, just everything was worse. You know what I mean? People hadn't got their, their stuff completely dialed in. Dynavap's tolerances weren't as good as I'm sure they are, you know, seven years later. So it's like getting the tips in, getting the condenser in, getting the mouthpiece in. It used to be kind of hard sometimes. Like you would have to make sure you had it in there just so, and then you have to twist it as you're pushing down and then you get it seated in place and it's perfect. And it's just like, you have this condenser now and it's like, like I'll put this close to the mic, just listen. Get it in place here. Like, do you hear that little click, right? When you, when you put the, listen when you put the cap on here right? You hear the captivations, they give you a click. So it, it know, you know, you're in place. The tolerances on this are just dramatically improved from where they started or even where they were like three years ago. I would say everything just goes together so much better. Uh, Ryan Nielsen, no XL is the same, same bowl, same tip. Only difference between the two is the condenser slash mouthpiece versus just the condenser. So, um, that's the only difference, same size. Um, does the XL stem goes hot like other M's? I mean, if you're, if you're, there's no magic thing. If you're putting, you know, hit after hit, that heat has to go somewhere and it's going to retain heat to a degree, but, uh, they say it has 20% less heat transfer. So whatever you're used to your expectations of like how much heat transfers, it should be 20% less. But if you're doing like four hits in a row, yeah, man, this thing's going to get like glowing hot kind of thing. Can I weigh the 17 M? Sure. Why not? We can do that. We have the power. I have the power. Let's go ahead and load this up here. So this is the, the old school, the sandblasted here. Let's see what this one weighs. So 20.12. So pretty, pretty consistent. They've gone up like a gram of weight in give or take seven years. So that's the two side by side. Now I've got a beauty shot of each of them by themselves. That's the M7 there. I really think that does a pretty good job of capturing what the texture looks like in real life. And that's the M7 XL. So, um, you know, you, you got the mouthpiece and then the change of the body orientation gives it that different look as well. And then that's the M, it's called the M condenser assembly with mouthpiece, M7 condenser assembly with mouthpiece. That's a mouthful, but keep in mind this condenser assembly with mouthpiece, you can use this in whatever by, by no stretch. Is this an M condenser or something that'll work in your M it'll work in virtually any of their, um, 
over their bodies. And that's one of the great things about the Dynavap system is the interchangeability, the interplay between all the parts going back from the beginning. So if you have, you know, this old, why do I keep putting this away? If I have this old one here, right, I can still use this tip with this body. I can use this condenser with this body. So it really cool that you can going back to the beginning, everything works in place. Um, the XL does fit in a 10 mil downstem. Yes, it does. That old green tube, I know, right? Uh, it even has the Dynavap uh, label on it. Dynavap's old old logo. Well, their older logo. Um, I'll show you guys in a 10 mil mouthpiece here. Um, let's take this one here. So this is a this water pipe here. This is the double dragon. This has a 14 mil and a 10 mil joint. So this is 10 mil. So this is the M7. So that's the M7. It fits really nice in there. It's nice up high. Like um, the anvil goes way further down in a joint. So there's a very few water pieces I have. I can't use my anvil in because it just goes too far down in the joint. Whereas this just fits in really nice and just sits up top. So that's the M7 in there. And that's the M7 XL. So it's still going to fit. I guess it's going to make connection. It's got to be this mouthpiece section. Yeah, so the mouthpiece section is what's going to make the connection there, but that's going to fit in a 10 millimeter um, piece as well, which is great. I'm really, that's a great something they started doing. Um, just make it work natively. Like you don't need an adapter then, but you might need an adapter because not many people have 10 millimeter pieces, right? So, so that's the condenser. And then here's the tip. So the tip is always such an important part of any new Dynavap. Sorry, guys, I'm in my coffee sounds so I try to mute that. Um, so the M is such an important part of the tip. And that's probably, you know, the primary place the change happens between all the devices. It's the thing you're going to notice the most. But you see, it has that huge amount of mass that's sitting right underneath, right underneath the bowl itself. So that's going to act, you know, uh, same idea as like an anvil battery sort of thing. This is just intended to be a heat um, soaking point, a place that can retain some heat. And something that's really cool, if you notice, if you take a look at this one here. So we've got all, I'm gonna cover my face here. So we've got all this mass here, and then we've got our bowl. But if you think about it, when you have your half bowl in, you also have this air gap here, right? So you're gonna have an air gap. You got your flower up here, air gap, this big bunch of mass down here. So when you have the half bowl position, you're getting an increase in the convection and you're getting a reduction in the conduction, reduction in conduction. So further convection if you use the half bowl position on this one. One thing that was really cool, yeah, we're, we're going to pack it up. Don't don't you worry, vulg kuwab. Um, I, I, I get all my talking out of the way and then we get, then we get silly. Um, first I got to get my talking or else we get silly too soon. I just lose my train of thought. We have no idea what we're talking about. One thing I think is really cool. Now take a look at this crown. I want to show you a better picture. So you can see in this picture, like the crown looks a little bit sharp, right? And it is a little bit sharp. Um, you know, is it one of those things where you're going to catch it on your, oh God, I get, you know, I hurt myself. Ah, probably not. Right. But it is sharp enough, and the idea behind them doing this is so that this can act as a grinder. So you can just hold your bud here and just kind of twist and grind little bits of flour off there into your bowl. That's the idea. Or, of course, you can always just stab, twist. Oh, you just watched my video, George. Nice, sunny boy. Good job, man. I like that. Um, you can always just stab it in the bud, twist, kind of pull it out. So this one, is it's, it's honestly a little bit sharp. Like, I do find it... It's the sharpest one I found by far. In terms of the, um, hey, thanks, Brady. I saw you earlier, man. You're a, you're a real diehard. I like that. Um, in terms of the capacity, I believe George said it was like it's ever, it's either ever so slightly bigger or smaller than the M+, Plus, but we're talking like 0 0.01 grams kind of thing. Like it's, it's extremely small difference between them. Um, you know, it's not like something where they have like a big bowl and a small bowl. It's all just like variations on a bowl size, basically. Um, I'm, I'm going to run this uh, XO, XOA Fallen. I'm going to run this with the captive cap that it comes with. Um, excuse me, geez. 
fucking, I'm swearing now. Oh my God. Uh, mute that last part. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's just uh, it's a lot, lot going on around here. Lately. It was no sneaky zoo, you know. It's like sometimes you really need someone to leave. To, it's like I always know sneaky zoo does a lot, but like you really know they do a lot when someone's not there, you know. Hey, Daniel Siddons, I met you at Champs. I was the high guy. Hmm, I don't remember a particularly high guy. Um, Maybe it was me, but good to meet you, man. Thanks. Uh, maybe it might remind me if there's something else that I might remember, you know. Yeah, we're going to uh, Volg Kuaba. I, I don't know if there's a better way to say that, but uh, yeah, I'm going to show you that for sure. The adjustable mouthpiece is pretty darn cool on this one, I have to say. So that's another shot of the tip there. There you get a sense of the two side by side, um, how much bigger the XL actually is. Oh God, I have my phone here. Give me one sec, guys. See, now what's going to happen here is our buzzer doesn't work. And so this guy's going to keep calling back and then he's going to, I'm not going to be able to give this, bring this down here because I'm doing the mail or this, this live stream. So this is that thing where I was talking about when Sneaky Zoo's gone, everything gets a little uh, chaotic, but we'll see. We're going to, we're going to figure it out. This is the old landline here. So uh, everyone needs a landline in their life if you don't have one. We're going to, is he going to call again? I don't know. I hope he got in. It's like, hopefully someone just lets him in. So that's again, that's the pattern you see there. That's kind of fun. I like that pattern. Um, just another shot. You know, I think it's a pretty striking looking tip. You see, it kind of looks like it has a seven. Like it looks like a seven is carved out of that tip there. That's kind of the idea. Also acting as an airflow channel. Um, so that's a pretty, it's a pretty upgraded tip, honestly. Like especially where they started from. And that's the mouthpiece. Great looking mouthpiece. And great mouth feel on it too. I really like that. Um, it's got some, you know, some interest, some angularity to it. It's, it would be so easy for them to just make a, you know, circular one, just a tapered one like they've done in the past. But I think this one is, um, it's just a lot more refined and just feels nice in the mouth. Every time I use my cube, I think of transformers, the cube. Yeah. Hey, there you go, man. That's a good throwback. I like that. So there's a shot of the tip there. It looks really great on the, yeah, the machining is, is beautiful. I agree. Machining is fantastic on these ones there. Attention to detail is just getting so much better. And then we get to the more, some more of the beauty shots here. We're going to have a quick look through these. And then we're going to answer a few questions and show some examples for all the people ready for examples. We're getting right to that point there. So that, that's pretty cool there. I like that. Honestly, the mouthpiece. That's a, that's a sense of the M plus, or I keep saying M plus, the M7XL. It's just, whenever there's a new thing coming out, I'm still on the old one, you know, for a ways back. So that's the components. One thing that's very cool about both of these, both of these devices, which is just kind of cool when you think about it, you have smaller, bigger, you know, two different devices, different components, all that kind of stuff. They each have four O-rings. So they each use four O-rings. On the M7, the O-rings are here. You have two O-rings on your tip, and then you have two O-rings on the condenser. Take that out here. Oh, I'm disassembling this in a weird way. You have two on your condenser, and then when you have the M7XL, the mouth or the O-rings rather are two on the tip and then two on the mouthpiece. So four and four on both. If you look back at old Dynavaps, they used to have eight. The old, the original Omnivap had eight O-rings. So I want to show you here, I'm going to put this like the wrong way kind of thing. When you don't, like um, when we're not using this as an M7XL, we're just using this as an M7. So let me just put this together here. Am I doing this wrong? Maybe I am doing this wrong. I never do these things live. Okay, well, sorry. We're, we're not doing this live. I, I got to test these things before I do them live. <laughs> it's not the first time I've done that. But um, yeah, four and four in terms of the O-rings. So I think that's pretty good. Yeah, another thing that they really wanted to do with the M7 um, and the M7 XL was to bring the price down. If you notice, these things are actually cheaper 
than the M plus was. So the M plus I believe was $100 or is $90. And now this is 75, right? So this is only $75 for the M7 and then $100 for the M7 XL US prices. So I want you to take a look at that condenser there and you notice that it has that little kind of edge on its far right side there. And that's because it doesn't have any O-rings holding this together. So in this condenser, it has, uh, or in the mouthpiece rather, you get two O-rings in the mouthpiece, but the condenser itself has no O-rings. It has these little cantilever springs and they simply catch in here and then that's what holds it in place. Now the other cool part about this is as you notice, I want to pull do this here so you can listen, right? Can you? I don't know if you can hear that. It's it's quite quiet, but do you hear that little click? Because essentially, what that little click is is it's locking the mouthpiece in a different position, and that's how you're adjusting the air to vapor ratio in this one. So if you think back to the OmniVap or the Vong, they use kind of a twisting, a different strategy like that. This one is just simply this click based into the mouthpiece. So I really like that because it's so easy to know exactly where you have it set up. Um, you're not kind of wondering which position you had that trying to match the one you had last time. You can say, okay, it's on click two and click two is where I like to use this one. So let's go ahead and let's load this thing up and let's get ourselves a session going. Um, can it close airport fully? No, uh, you can't. Well, I mean, you're gonna, to do that, you'd have to use your finger anyways, because you have this, of course, you have the airport, right? So um, if you want something where you're gonna close off fully, look at the Vong. The Vong is gonna be uh, a great choice for that. So let's go ahead, grab all of our gear. We're gonna need some gear today. And we're gonna run this sucker here. Now, is anyone, is anyone still using their FMJ? That's one thing I wanna know, because the FMJ was such a, groundbreaking um, product in its simplicity and what am I doing wrong here? It was such a groundbreaking product in terms of its simplicity and its performance. And just to kind of show people what the Dynavap was capable of doing. And then it was so inexpensive, right? Like we're talking, you know, $10, um, incredibly low price on that for something that can really kick your performance up to a next level, right? So I don't know if anyone's still using their FMJs, but I would imagine so. We got a, we got a few there. We got a few for sure. Finally put my F, FMJs away, learned how to use my iSpire wand appropriately. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, Carlos, I hear that. Now, Carlos Santiago, have you tried an armored cap? I would be curious if you've tried one of those. Oh, you just answered me. You're like reading my mind. We're having a mind meld here, man. Stay, stay out of there. You don't want to know what's in there, okay? Don't tell anyone. So this flower is so, so, so good. So tasty. So incredibly pungent. Um, this was some of the some of the better legal market stuff I've bought, honestly. Like this was towards the top of the heap, I'd have to say. I'm a huge proponent of getting rid of uh, stems. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm not a stem vapor. I, I, I clean off the stems, but it just seems wrong to me. It's like eating an eggshell or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, that's not the food part. So it's like, that's not the, that's not the, you know, effects containing part, right? Get rid of your stems. Unless you're, the only other thing, if you're not going to get rid of your stems is just save them, save them up and roll yourself a ridiculous stem joint or something like that, you know? Let's go ahead. Yeah, humble. That's a, that's a good point. Add herb to my Dynavap this time. Don't hit it empty. That was a fun. That was a fun session. That last. Uh, that last one. I was. It was. Uh, I remember that hit too because it was just. It throws you off because it's like everyone's done a hit where they've combusted. I mean, if you've used the Dynavap a, a bunch, everyone's done a hit where they've combusted. Everyone's done a hit where it didn't heat up enough. You know, so you kind of have a sense of the scopes of flavor you may experience. But this one. It was completely different because all you're tasting is just like the, you know, vaped like dirt you have left over in there, you know, all the grime you have in your device is like what you're vaping. So not quite the same thing. I need my metal. You know, I'd be needing my metal Dynavap rest here. 
right? Metal Dynavap rest. If you guys don't have one, you need one. Especially if you have an anvil. It's nice for a Dynavap, but I think it's pretty much necessary for an anvil, uh, is the way I look at it. So what we're gonna do first, let's go ahead and try this M7. I think we're gonna try that first. My condenser in there, get in there you, okay. So I'm gonna try this one here, and I'm gonna go with a no airport kind of thing, hit this one dry, and then we're gonna try the M7 through a glass piece. Go to, when did 420 sales start? Oh man, that's a good question. Ours are gonna start, uh, I don't know exactly, but it'll be before 420 for sure. It, it, they're always before 420. Nobody's waiting for 420 anymore. It's like, it's always. Um, yeah, yeah. C Carlos Santiago, Dynavap half bowl converters, they're in stock, man. We just finally got them in stock up here. Last week was like inventory week. DHL was so sick of hearing from me. And uh, because I just was like, you know, trying to get my stuff from them, God forbid. Could you imagine? Now, how I, how I usually like to load my Dynavap, if I have a good amount of flour in here, um, then I just use my Dynavap, just kind of a, I just sort of press it in there and just give it a little twist. I think I have this to the half bowl position. Let's make sure, let's make sure. Humble, are we gonna carry the Forge induction heater and new, We I don't have updates on price. We definitely will carry it, but it's going to be a, okay, so this is the full bowl. It's going to be a slower release on that one. They're not just going to have, if you're interested in the Forge, um, I would advise you to go on Vistrato's website. I don't know if they have a wait list sign up there, but I would email them um, because I know it's going to be a super tight initial release. Maybe they'll have another wave coming soon, but I believe the number is like 100 on the initial release. Don't quote me on that, but I believe it's going to be around 100. So there's not going to be that that many, right? So, um, But keep in mind, too, that's the initial release. It's not like they're making 100 of them. Um, you know, at least I don't think so. Um, sorry, I'm reading reading the questions here. Humble stole my questions. I was typing it. That happens, man. That happens. Every, you know, it just means you guys are on the same wavelength, right? That's a good thing. So let's go ahead and try this out. This is a, the, this is a full bowl in this. I'm going to heat it. Um, I'm, I am going to twist it. I'm going to just kind of aim my heat right at this bit of thermal mass. Um, I'm not, maybe with the M7XL, just because I, I haven't tried this yet. I hate combusting when I'm just like experimenting on stream, you know. Um, but I haven't been hitting these ones where I just, you know, armored cap style and just hold the torch there. I've always been rotating a little bit. So let's go ahead and try that out here. Yeah, awesome guy. 100%. The Forge is going to change the induction heater game. People people don't understand yet. Not Some people, like some people totally get it. But some people just kind of don't. They're like, oh, I like the wand. It's like, hey, maybe the wand is fine, but it's just like you're not going to use this beside the wand and then convince yourself these are the same thing. It's it's totally like the way that it works is completely different. Like every aspect of it is designed from the ground up by guys that were working on brain surgery equipment uh, as their previous project. So this thing's, she's getting warm. There we go. Whew. So I'm not covering the airport at all. A lot of heat held in this in this tip. Like that is a ton of heat retention for a single heating cycle. Wow. Forge the M7. Oh, Godot, you're a genius. So overall, we're going to go ahead and empty this out here after that has a second to cool down. But really, really good heat retention on that. I was giving it a little spin heating it kind of just where the base of the cap hits the metal part of the tip. But I would like, you know, it, it had that taste of, it's not combusting, but it's a little hotter than I would normally vape it. It's just that like, 
your 410 degrees kind of thing. But let's go ahead and empty this out. And I have an IQ of 420. That's that's pretty good. I like that. Now you got to learn how to take a hot cap off. It's just part of part of the process. So that looks really well vaped. Um, it's always so hard to try to demo this, but I'm usually going to make a mess. Let me just see if I can not make a mess. 50 50 chance wow like that is that is a rock solid extraction look at that let me i really hope i can show this to you guys like check check that out there can you see that i don't want to right so oh see i'm already making a mess it just doesn't work it just doesn't work um but take my word for it that is like i would not be pushing flour more than that like that is as extracted as you are going to want to get it. Um, very, very even as well. Maybe a couple little tiny bits that are less even, but I mean, that is on the darkness scale. If 10 is riding the line kind of thing, this is at a solid seven, eight, you know, you could push it a little bit farther than that, but too much more. And you're just flirting with combustion. They can only take so much heat. It's only so big, right? So that was a super impressive, um, and super impressive hit. I mean, just overall. Now we're going to go ahead. We're going to use the XL in a water piece. And then we're going to try the forge. Something uh, uh, like Godot's idea, man. It was going to, that was, that one hits hard though. That's the one thing people don't understand about Dynavap sometimes is they, they underestimate them. They underestimate just how hard they hit and just how much that little tiny bit of flour affects you. Especially if you already vape, at least you can make the the connection in your mind. Okay, I know how much flour I have to put in. I know the effects it gives me. But if you currently smoke flour and that's all you do, you really can't imagine what it can do because that's like a, a hit in a bowl. Like you'd have like one hit. You'd probably feel it, you know, but you wouldn't feel it that much. Yeah, I should add an overhead cam, Nick Ben. I appreciate that idea. It's a really good idea. I've wanted to. I looked at one, actually. I looked at like... Um, you know, getting kind of a cage over it. Maybe I'll go, maybe I'll go that route. I, I mean, oh, look at uh, fireworks. All right, rock and roll. So let's try this M7XL. Now this one here, okay, so as you see, let me try to show you here. This is gonna be tough to show, but see, you see the, this one, um, this one here has the full bowl position and the other one has the half bowl position. So you can see the CCD sits a lot higher up. It's literally half. So we're going to try a half bowl hit using the M7XL. <laughs> Dan Unknown, did I miss the forge? I was impressing my child with a feat of strength. You did not miss the forge, and I hope you impressed them very well. You know, that's important. Your kids got to know how strong you are, right? So let's go ahead, load this one up. We'll try this. We're not going to have, we don't have water in this piece. So we're going to be doing a dry dry water piece kind of a hit but i mean that that dynavap hit i am feeling that man 100 percent. like taking down a whole like a full dynavap bowl in one heating cycle all to your dome kind of thing it hits pretty good man like it hits pretty good so i'll show you again just how i load it up give me a second here i have to swear into the mic this time here um so it happens you don't feed yourself like, you know i'm not eating right it's just like i need I need a caretaker, you know? So, um, so half bowl position on this one. Let's go ahead and just give it a little twisty action. I'm not pushing hard. The goal isn't to shove as much in there as I can. I just want it full to capacity without it being shoved in there. So, I mean, and that is exactly what that is. And this is a half bowl, keep in mind, right? So keep in mind. Um, was the M7 single extraction hot as an M plus single extraction? I would say that was honestly pretty reasonably smooth. Like you guys saw me, I think I took f five or six hits in a row on that. And I don't really think I coughed after. So maybe I just got lucky or it, it seemed actually reasonably smooth. And that is on the smaller one. So, uh, forge, forge, forge. Uh, now the question is, should I do the forge with an armored cap? And the answer is, see, come on, you guys got to be the ones twisting my rubber arm. I can't be suggesting these hardcore things to do. Like, you know, you guys got to be the one. You got to be the the pressure. I'm the peer. You're pressuring, right? So, um, 
give me that pressure. And go ahead, before I hit this one, give the video a quick like. I got to use my sweet coffee cup here, but throw the video a like. Let's make YouTube happy. Pump that stock. Pump that stock up. Let's make that thing happen. Let's really do this thing. Why not both? Godot, you're a genius again. What? Oh my Lord, look at this guy. He's just nothing but, nothing but good ideas. Why not both? Why not? Well, the only reason is just because I need to, sur I need to survive the whole thing. Hey, Mike Hunt. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. So let's go ahead. I'm going to heat this up in the same sort of fashion that worked quite well. So let's go ahead. So I'm just aiming this right at sort of the intersection of where the cap is meeting this fat part of the tip. I'm um, just giving it a light little twist as I'm doing it. And I'm going to go this one here. I'm going to go open airport again because I really want to hammer home for you guys just how well it works when you don't cover the airport at all. Because if you can get away with not covering the airport and it works as good, then you can stop covering it and it just makes the whole thing easier to use. Combusted. Oh, oh, I pushed it too far. <laughs> Got too close to the sun. <laughs> Got too close to the sun, guys. Like Icarus. Like Icarus. But I mean, that's what I, I want to. I want to push it for you guys. You know what I'm saying? I want. I want you. I want to show what it can do. So, I remember last time when I had that accidental combustion hit within the stream it caught me ripped because it's like when you're getting those accidental combustion it's like a weird hybrid like at least that one it was like the first entire inhale see here's another theory i get i get off i, I get on a on a tangent here here's another theory i have i have pretty good lung power right i do a lot of cardio um you know so i have pretty good lung power so i think a lot of the times that first entire pull pure vapor, didn't taste like combustion at all. And then you start doing it the next one. Penalty dab, oh God. Um, for, yeah, we'll, we'll do a forge penalty, man. I'm not set up to do dabs here. Um, but I think a lot of the times, the reason that I combust is taking too long of a hit because it's like a blacksmith bellows. You're just giving it this like, it's you have maybe like say like the tiniest little point, flash point that combustion could occur. And if you took just like a five second hit, then it would just slow and it wouldn't go. But if you take like a 15 second hit, then it has a chance to slowly, slowly grow because of all the airflow, right? So I don't know. That's my theory. Um, that's my theory. And maybe I'll, I, I don't even, can I, can I, how about I put some, uh, I'll put some concentrate in a Dynavat bowl in the forge, okay? We'll do the penalty dab in the Dynavat. I think that'll like at least allow me to survive. You know what I'm saying? I want to make sure. Uh, have I tried the Nugs Happel? I have not. I don't even know what the heck that is, man. What is that? Um, let's get our forge. Here's our forge. Let's see an M7 for scale. So I got to move it back to get the scale. There you go. That's a good scale right there. Gives you a sense of just how big the forge is, right? So... Um, so we got this. I got to make sure I have all my stuff here. Those combustion ones, man, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. They just, they hit you. They like, the, when you're on that hybrid vaping combustion, like, those are maybe some of the hardest hitting hits. I don't know. I also did the other one right before it. So I guess that's a factor too. So um, we're going to use the regular M for this because the other one is lightly combusted in. I got to deal with both of these either way. Okay. Yeah, the forge is a big dog. I've heard a few people and they're just like, well, I can't put the forge in my pocket. And I'm just like, you absolutely can't. No. Um, no, you can't. I wonder, do I have a half? No, I don't. Um, the forge is, it's big. It's like, a, it's it's big. You just, you can't. It's a big dog, man. It's a full-size dog. It's a guy of St. Bernard or something like that. Okay, so let's go ahead. 
Happel is the best for old school hash. Oh, interesting. I was, I don't know who caught my live stream the other day. Who caught my live stream the other day where I was using this? Who caught my live stream? I think it was on Tuesday. Did you guys see when I was using this? I'm going to do, I think it's going to be next, next Friday. I'm going to have a full, like this live stream next Friday will be this. Um, but this was actually pretty good for hash. I don't know who recommended that. I want to say it was Godot. Uh, I don't know if it was, but they recommended trying hash in it and it worked fantastic. Um, so I was using it, if you haven't seen the Vatman, this little baby right there. This is still the, this is not the 2.0. That was the Green Mark. Hey, Green Mark, you're a genius, man. Thank you for that. Um, but yeah, we're gonna be we're gonna be having another one of those streams soon. So I, I this is where I started to get like all over the place. I'm like I'm here, I'm there, I'm like multitasking, but like doing nothing. I don't know if you can really call it multitasking if you're accomplishing nothing. So um, yeah, I could try some of that hash in there. I mean, I got that hash in there. Like, let's make this interesting if we're gonna make it interesting. Now, um, here we go. Okay. We're gonna make this interesting. Let's make it interesting. So we got, this is gonna get, this is gonna get, okay, full size bowl. We're gonna get some flour. We're gonna get a little bit of this hash in here. It's gonna be kind of a half. I'm not gonna to put too much though. I don't wanna overload it. See these little, the rip strips, right? That's a great shot of them. You posted the clip of methane. Hey, that's cool. I, I didn't see that. I'll have to, so I'm gonna try a little, See, I, I just love how easy it is to rip this off here, right? So I'm just going to rip off a little tiny piece like that. I'm going to put that at the bottom, kind of making it into a little, little piece. So I got that in the bottom, and we'll put the flour on top. I love hash and the M+, plus, like you suggested. Yeah, that can work. That can work extremely good, too. So I'm loading this one a little different here because I don't want it to, there we go. So I'm trying to remember, I think when I did the armored cap, I believe I did it on a thousand joules and then it was like the second heating cycle. So we're gonna try something like that with this too. We are gonna try it and I think we're gonna be able to get it. Okay, whew, man, oh man, those hits are hitting. Mm, that's good. There we go. Two thumbs up. It's, two thumbs up does something too. Oh, that's the fireworks. Okay. Okay. I think we got everything here. Is this still live? Brian, you know, uh, uh, your guess is as good as mine. You know what I mean? After like a couple, you know, Dynamaps hit hard, man. A couple like those big rips in a row. It's like, woo. So we're going to try this. Okay. I, I got to get the right hand so I don't knock something out. Get the forge here. So we're gonna go on a thousand. So we're on here, a thousand sixty percent. Yeah, I think a uh, overhead shot would be good. I think that is a good idea. I like that idea. Cause it would also just give me an opportunity to buy more video gear. So I, I always really like that. So I'm going to heat this up and then I'm going to let it sit for a few seconds and then I'm gonna heat it up again. So. Wish me luck, guys. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Got to talk to the stretch a little. You got to stretch before you hit them big rips, man. You got to like, you got to be ready for them or they're not, not going to be kind. Make some good contact. See, it's already clicking, but we're going the full thousand. Okay, we're just doing one. Here we go. It's kind of getting to know it. So now let's make this click again. Get it to know. Oh, guys, guys. Guys, no, <laughs> no, no, why have you forsaken me? Oh man, that is what you call playing yourself. But 
in all fairness, that is not also having a, ga a battery gauge on here. Battery gauge would be nice. I wouldn't complain about a battery gauge because now, you know, now we're just gonna, we're gonna try with the torch here. We're gonna just torch it up, man. We're gonna try, we're gonna go. Woo, she's warm. I wanna, no, see, I don't, I don't know if that, I don't think that hit was, uh, I don't, that's pretty warm. I don't think that hit with the forge was quite, like it seemed like it was like maybe a little tiny bit underpowered because it was like the last one, you know, but it does a pretty good job in terms of holding the, um, holding the same experience throughout the battery cycle, which is important. So, okay, let's try this out. Did this, I don't even know if this cool down clicked, but I mean, if I can touch my finger on it, it oh, it's a little warm, it's a little warm. But you got to get those kitchen hands, man. You gotta get those kitchen hands. Everyone who's worked in a restaurant, you know exactly what I mean by those kitchen hands. How about a match? A match might be a little tough. Yeah, where is my magnet ring? Here it is. Who's saying that? Nick Ben? There we go. That That's the easiest way to cool it off there, so. Okay, let's give this a try here now, man. I'm all, I'm all bamboozled, but we're trying to, trying to get this thing to come back to life. Okay, I'm just gonna basically hold it right here. I'm like gun shy after combusting once on stream, you know. Not normally a combustor, because I'm usually not kicking it to up to 11. I'm usually not hitting it as hard as I possibly can, right? But it's always fun to see what they are capable of too, you know, because you want to kind of know. <sighs> she feels like she's getting warm, man. She feels like she's getting real warm. Ooh, very quick. Yeah, not bad. You can really, really taste that hash. Do you guys ever do that? Do you ever just hit it with a little more torch in the middle of your hit kind of thing? Like sometimes I do that, especially if it's an armored cap, just because it has a little more of a margin for error. But uh, man, putting that little bit of hash in there, that just kicks it up so nicely in terms of the flavor um, and the effects for sure. Wow. Unfortunate. We couldn't use the forge, but we can do it next week, right? We can do it in, in the next live stream I do kind of thing. I'll make sure it's charged up. I wasn't planning on using it. I guess that's kind of the main thing, right? But I should always be ready to use all my vapes at all times. I really don't have any good excuse, you know, just a lot of so-so uh, kind of excuses. So there we go, guys. That's going to be the stream for today. I really hope you enjoyed that one. Checking out the new Dynavap M, the new M7 XL. Uh, I am definitely feeling those series of hits there, um, and I, I'm really looking forward to trying that out in the Forge. We're going to get that thing charged up, and we're going to rock that out. So thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate you coming, and we'll, next week we're going to have the Vapman heating station. So that's going to be Friday at 2 p.m. We'll, we'll be back with another stream before then, and we'll hit that Forge like it owes us money. So keep it green, keep it sneaky, and I'll see you next time.